Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast. I'm your host, Lance Armstrong, joined to my left by J.B. Hager, and over there, the loser of the pull-up contest, Ooh. George Hincapie. Ooh. Ooh, when did that happen? We're bringing yes, that so this, this was a... Uh, you know, this is a man who does five days a week who does upper body strength work. Four-ish, four days. But so we go out for a ride yesterday, and I've got these. Uh, can you turn me up a little bit? You're, you're up. I'm up. You're up. Um, we go uh, for a little ride, and we come back, and I've got this pull-up bar with some rings hanging off it. And I was just sitting there playing around, just L.A., just nothing. I was impressed with the form. And, and he was say. like, <clears throat> he's like, Wow. Did you just do that? And I was like, what's the big deal? So he gets on. He goes like this. One. <laughs> two. <laughs> and I'm like, get you another one. And that was it. He could Bro, not do three pull-ups. I'm not acclimated yet. I just got to Colorado. We're at 8,000 feet. Give us a little credit here. The muscles will start firing here pretty soon. It is. It is. I was embarrassed for you. <laughs> he's, got, he's keeping that upper body lean for the bike. No, I'm actually trying to uh, put trying on a little muscle, up? but it's Are not you? working. Yeah. <laughs> Today's show brought to you by, like it is each and every time, brought to you by Aura Ring. Uh, this is the company behind the smart ring that tells you so much critical information. Obviously, uh, tracks your sleep, your recovery, your activity, measures all your sleep cycles, heart rate variability. Um, uh, core temp, just critical stuff, especially in the era of just all, all kinds of weird shit going on. You want to know these things. Um, it is, uh, it's the best. It really is the best. There's a bunch of products out there that attempt to do what Aura does, but nobody gets close. Uh, head on over to Aura Ring. Here's our flow code, AuraRing.com. That's O-U-R-A Ring.com. We are talking about stage two and what a stage it was. Let's first cue mon ami Alan Azizi. Stage two. Perros Girec, two. Mur de Bretagne, Guerre les Dents. Oh my God. Mures de Vec, two. Mur de Bretagne, Guerre les by the way, he's in, he recorded that for us over in Corsica. You hear like the birds, like those oh, Corsican birds nice. in the back. That was that was a nice touch. Yeah, that Mur de Breton, that's a hard climb. I got to give a shout out to my boy Cadell who won at the Mur de Breton 10 years ago. He's, he's coming up on his 10 year anniversary of the Tour de France state or Tour de France win. So has uh, it been that long? It's been that long. Holy hell! Kind of crazy to think about that. And again, it was funny uh, uh, while we were watching the race that you guys are both like, "Did we ever do that climb?" No, I had no idea. But George didn't I, know either. I knew I did it. Well, he did it with Cadell. Did it with yeah. Cadell, and I did it. But then Johan reminded us that we did it you in did uh, do one it. of the stages of the tour with Lance. Uh, but it wasn't a finished stage, so or it wasn't a finish of a stage. Yeah, it's so I can't even remember a lot of this stuff. I don't know what is wrong with me. I think I just delete like my hard drive just can't keep holding on to memories. <laughs> um, it's a pro well, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but Matthew Vanderpool. I mean, for somebody that didn't look that great yesterday and we heard some rumblings of potential reasons why that were, to me, they were legitimate. I was like, all right, well, I guess that's, that's the reason why. Well, nope. He no. pulled it out. I mean, that move, obviously, they did it two times. Um, a time bonus the first time up. So what is it? Eight, five, and two. And if you just do the math, he was 18 seconds down. The first time bonus was eight, five, and two. The finish line bonus was 10, six, and four. So you even I can figure out 10 and 8 gets you close. Um, I never would have thought Philippe would have lost time, but, I mean, what a move. Well, the first climb when he did it, no surprise. Classic Mateo Vanderpool, right? Yeah. Are but we going to call him Mateo, MVP. Matthew, or Matthew, we, we or just go MVP? MVP. We gotta get an MVP. We got to get some I mean, consistency the, here. The, the amount of confidence this kid has to say, we're, I'm at the Tour de France, and you know what? I'm not going for. I'm not just going for the stage win. I'm going all in for mm -hmm. both the yellow and the stage win, and to put in that kind of effort with 15k to go, uh, with those guys chasing behind, and the 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 intention was clear. I'm getting this time bonus. I'm going to try to recover and I'm going to try to win the stage. And it was just unbelievable what he was able to pull off. What was what was even cooler was the intention was clear, but the intention was clear yesterday. Like he, I mean, he just had to. 
um, uh, be dis. I mean, it had to be massively dis. I mean, it had the 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 jerseys themed like his grandfather, who never it was eight times on, on the podium of the Tour de France, died a year ago. They changed the whole jersey. Like that was the intention. Again, we don't know what happened right before that. He could have been stuck behind one of those crashes. He could have just came back. Um, but the legs were just unbelievable well, today. But, but to bounce back and just say, "All right, well, that was yesterday, and today's today." Like that's shit. But after he burned that match on the first climb, did you th- at that moment think he could recover and I, do it again? I, totally. Yeah. This kid has so much horsepower, uh, not just for an effort, but he has horsepower in reserve. So that's. Um, I was questioning was, it. Uh, well, I, in fact, I texted the team. I texted Johan. I'm like, Johan, can he recover from this? Because mm-hmm. I wasn't sure. But and even Johan wasn't sure. But he said, I'm not counting him out. Well, the reason is, you know, when he went the first time, it was so imp- and he got such a gap so quickly. And then he almost looked like, you know, not he wasn't even holding it. He was getting caught. Uh, he knew he was going to get he, there. He, he all he doing, needed, all he needed, he wasn't going to try to stay away. He just needed to get there before anybody else, make sure Ala Philippe doesn't get any time bonuses, and he was on reserve. Like the, 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 I'd love to see that power file. They all knew the time bonus was coming. They all wanted to get it, but none of them were willing to put in that effort that Matteo put in, which was, I'm going all in. I want the yellow in the stage win, all or nothing. Um, before we keep breaking this down, because it was there, there's a lot to talk about today, and and I think we uh, we should also continue to talk about yesterday because it's just uh the the aftermath of this two crashes but primarily the one with this idiot standing in the road uh the 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 aftermath just continues uh it's become a global story um it's kind of sad that it takes a a fool like that to jump in the road for cycling and the tour de france to be a headline all over the world but it is um today's show also brought to you by roca these are these are the best glasses out. Not not just uh, the fit of them, the lens. Uh, they got the new Matador. They got a bunch of guys in the tour rocking them. Uh, the prescription glasses, which JB has upgraded to, uh, and I use religiously. Um, you know, second to none. They're the best. Uh, founded by badass athletes uh, who who really practice what they preach. Based in Austin, Texas, our old hometown. Uh, miss that place. Um, they've completely rethought eyewear, and uh, we're proud to be partners with them. Head on over to Roka, R-O-K-A dot com. The Move listeners get 20% off. That's Roka, R-O-K-A dot com. By the way, you got to enter the buy code, The Move. Today's show also brought to you by Element T. This is my go-to. And look what showed up. Hello. New flavor. New flavor alert. Grapefruit salt. Now, and we were... Uh, I must admit, we made a few cocktails last night. George dropped some of his element tea <laughs> into did. his cocktail. I, I thought, highly recommend And this it. is not part of this partnership, but you <laughs> dropped some element tea into a Lyft vodka and soda. This per- could perhaps be my new go-to drink because I no felt like I was shit. hydrating while enjoying a good evening at your house. He was so proud of that. Well, what I, is amazing <laughs> is since alcohol uh, dehydrates you, you just thought that yeah. might offset it. I was offsetting it. I think it's brilliant. Well, and it, it, it is. And this is the new flavor, grapefruit salt. I'm loving it. It's, it's eclipsed for now. It's eclipsed my favorite flavor of orange salt. Uh, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium. Um, it's just the best. There's no crap in it. Forget, and uh, Forget about that Red Bull, Red Bull vodka. It's now LMNT vodka. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And here's the thing. Our listeners get to try it for free. Get a free eight-pack sample for the cost of shipping. There's the flow code. If you're watching the show, which you should be because it's better to watch, you get to look at George, the pull-up loser. Um, <laughs> so here's how it works. So the Move listeners can purchase an LMNT sample pack for the cost of shipping. Each sample pack includes eight packets of LMNT, a bunch of different flavors. Head on over to Drink lmnt.com slash the move and get your recharge sample pack for just the cost of shipping and uh yeah maybe put in your, in your cocktail like george <laughs> hopefully i'm sure you people out there can do more pull-ups than george and Cappy can i tell you that much give I mean, me to the end of the tour i'm gonna work max on that. armstrong can do more pull-ups than you <laughs> um should we should we uh should we touch on yesterday there's just so much to yeah. keep keep going yeah. on i mean you had we got some incredible imagery I loved the, I don't know if we got it queued up, but I mean, this picture, I saw this popped up in my Instagram feed. Look at this. People think bike racing is riding around in the countryside of France, and this is all, you know, sunflowers and, and croissants. Bullshit. 
look at this kid. First of all, the guy looks like he's about to die. He's so skinny. And just, I mean, this is what cycling is, man. You just, yeah. I posted last night on uh, one of my Instagram stories the, the injury report. I mean, there's almost yeah. 12 to 15 riders, yep. anywhere from head traumas, loss of consciousness, bro broken ribs, hip and chest traumas, um, collapsed lungs. I mean, it looks like, a, there you go. It looks like a this has to war be the, scene. This, and this is just page one. Yeah. This, this has to be the longest injury update four for the guys league out ever. after the first stage uh i mean this was a colossal shit storm of a crash made it world headlines going. yep um mark solaire fractures on both arms you never see that he, yeah. he, he did not start today mark hershey uh big story from last summer's tour or last i should say last september's tour separated shoulder guys the, the this is this is bike racing people ask me all the time like what is, so what's it like when you crash like when you crash in the race can we go back to that page? I want to see what happened to Soren, our boy Soren, Crack Anderson. The Scott, the Scott Rocker? It didn't yeah. have his uh, description on we're, we're it. No, but see. that's what, because he's so fucking tough. Yeah. He doesn't, they don't even say. He just, oh. he just like, yeah. Yeah, okay. No, Hopefully he, he's he, okay. We want he to see him. He doesn't claim injury. Love that guy. We want to yeah. see him doing well. I like that here. guy too. I mean, no, people ask me like, well, so what's it like when you crash in a bike race? I said, well, I said, let me tell you exactly what it's like. I said, why don't you put your bike clothes on? You get in a car with your friend, let your friend drive. You can put your helmet on, but you're wearing your bike clothes. Have them go about 40 and jump out of the car. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jimmy Johnson always says he much, he's much more uh, scared of crashing on a bicycle than he is in a NASCAR 200 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, the, great... it's real consequences. And, and now I guess they're going to, the, uh, the tour says they're going to sue this girl, but they can't find her. Yeah. Smart girl. <laughs> yeah. I hope she's in a. She's well, I mean, in and the we kind of. We kind of imagine glossed. if she's like in a country and they have to extradite her. Like the story keeps going. She has been extradited <laughs> from you know Guadeloupe. Yeah, who knows? She, she could have. Yeah, she could have taken off. But I mean, the story doesn't end where the guys on the ground. I mean, think about the mechanics. There was over. Yeah, good point. Fifty to seventy-five bicycles on the ground, broken wheels, broken bikes. We saw several images of frames cracked in half. I mean, these guys. These poor mechanics must have been up till two, three in the morning last night, just getting the equipment back to these guys and get on their bikes. And then the guys, like you saw the picture, I mean, when you're that injured, you got road rash, you're sticking to the sheets at night. It's mm. just a terrible, awful way to start the Tour de France. So mm. if you show up with a bike and a spare bike, now a lot of those guys might be down to one bike. Will they have more sense? Yeah, well, they got plenty of bikes. They got plenty. They got but the, but the, you always have a you always have your bike. Like you you start the Tour de France on your favorite bike. Mm -hmm. Like if it cracks in two, obviously it's gone. The spare I don't. I was always even though they're made in the same place and they're the same size, they're just never the same. Mm. It's like that old pair of jeans, that old t shirt, like that <laughs> one you're wearing. You just love that. You know? No, maybe not. <laughs> maybe you don't. Love, I don't know. Chris Froome, Chris Froome took the start. I did. I, I called it yesterday. I said, "Homeboy's going home." Yeah, I mean, he couldn't get up. He had to get help getting no. up. He, he wasn't sure if he had broken some bones in his leg, which is it's got to be the worst feeling in the world, especially with what he's been through. Uh, but what a tough, what a tough guy, man! Did, yeah, went straight from the finish line to the hospital. Didn't get home till not midnight. only that he didn't was get getting home till midnight. Not only that, but I mean, he was getting booed going up the mountain, which is I mean, terrible. Oh man. I mean, Give the guy some love. The guy's a warrior. He's been wow. through hell and back, and he's still there. What, what, and he's it, getting booed up the final climb to the finish did line. Did you fall and hit your head? This <laughs> no. is not the way it works. You, you, France doesn't know. They don't like winners. They no. don't. And, and, and it was interesting. We were watching yesterday, and uh, uh, our uh, Liggett was, uh, you know, the people love him. Listen to the cheers. And I'm listening going, I don't think that, that sounds, that sounds different than cheers. <laughs> Maybe but, it'll change their attitude about it. I, I, it's changed my attitude about Chris Froome that he keeps showing up. I mean, he did another selfie from a hospital bed, which we've seen a lot of him in the, in the last few years. Mm. And, and finished the stage today, so hopefully the the worst is behind him and he gets starts recovering, and hopefully we see more of him this tour. Yeah, I don't know. His teammate recovered well. Yeah, Michael Woods. Michael in the first Woods. Group. Michael Woods was up there. He he was unfortunate yesterday, but. Uh, and was their GC uh, leader, um, uh, so those hopes are probably out the door. But he he recovered well and and fought to the end today. But this Matthew Vanderpool, truly the MVP. Yeah, I mean, still well, a great story. What he did at the finish line. I mean, he was right there at the front. Nairo Quintana goes. He goes out to Nairo. Uh, Cabrelli goes. He goes out to Cabrello. Seven hundred fifty meters to go. He looks back. Make no mistake. 
everybody is on the limit here. It's not like, oh, let's let him go and we'll try to catch mm-hmm. him. They're like, no, 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 we can't go with this right now. And he just rode away from everybody. Super impressive. And the the little point shout out to his grandfather yep. at the at the line, and what a story. And George brought up an, a a good point um, when the we saw the final results or the GC results that he'll probably hold this jersey for. If he's not, we all know he's not going to be there for the whole tour. It's in their interest to defend the jersey, which is going to change the whole dynamic of the race. Because um, well, I guess I guess they could let some select breaks go, since so many people well, lost time yesterday and today. Yeah, but the, tomorrow is the first chance, a real chance for the sprinters. So mm-hmm. you'll see Lotto and probably Quick Step controlling the race for Cav and Lotto for Caleb Ewan. Um, and then the next stage is also a sprint stage, I believe, and then the time trial. So yeah. But but back to today, right quick. I mean, Roglic and, and Pogachar, boy, <laughs> ain't nobody beating these two. Well, I, I I'm liking what I'm seeing from Primos. Last year, you saw him going full gas for every sprint he could, and I feel like, yes, he's going very hard. But I feel he's not giving it all there. He's letting his guys sit back a bit. He's letting Ineos take control of the race. Yeah, Pogachar is going went full gas for second place. Primos looked like he just kind of followed him in. Uh, I feel like a little change in strategy there, and, I, and I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. And, Ka- and, and Carapaz looked better. He Carapaz looked I, better, although Ineos has got the numbers. I don't they have it. the strength of the, yeah. of the team. They have the strongest team there. They controlled the whole last lap, which is a very difficult thing to do. But I don't like seeing – Richie Port is not quite out of the race. He's two and a half minutes behind. They put him at the front with two kilometers to go, so they knock yeah. him down a few more seconds. That's because he's out of the race. Well – I mean, they're doing now. They're doing a good now. They're obviously all in for Carapaz. Yeah, Garen Thomas did not did not look great today, and 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 their strategy backfired on them. I mean, they were they that last sort of call it mini lap. They were they were riding like they were uh, the favorites to win. And mm-mm. well, a stage like that, a real power finish. I mean, that should be suited for Garen Thomas. He was in perfect position at the bottom. They did an awesome lead out for him. He was in third or fourth wheel around that last corner with two kilometers to go. So for him to lose 15 seconds, you know, in a relatively, you know, not eventful finish, right. that shouldn't happen for uh, one of the leaders of the team. Yeah. Yeah. And as George pointed out in our pre-show, it's Jumbo's different this year and, and laying low. They were sticking their neck out a lot last year, early. Last year, all you saw was those yellow jerseys at the front. And this year, it's the opposite. We've seen Enios uh, right behind Quick Step, and they're taking control of the race. But I'm, I'm liking seeing Jumbo sitting back and – Watching it go and keeping Primos out of out of trouble. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Can Alpeson defend? How? How? how Do you see those, those guys are like linebackers? You see those guys at the yeah. front the last time. That is, that's a great team. Not for not being a pro tour team. I mean, they have the numbers. They have. They're all in for MVP. They're doing a great job, and I can see them controlling the race uh, for the next few stages for sure. Yeah. And how long is it? What do we got tomorrow? 182 k So it's still another another longish day. Which may have some weather action going on. I keep I keep trying to predict the weather, and I I, I mean they, it was almost a guarantee to rain today on that circuit, which would have been uh, miserable. Um, but uh, now they're saying, okay, no, who knows what happens? But 90 percent chance of rain uh, for tomorrow's finish, which. Um, we we can break down the finish and the the nature of it, all the turns. It could be messy. Uh, before we get to that, and and we're gonna, uh, I guess, um, we got to talk about a few things. We, we've got some action on the we do segment. This is, in fact, we've got a lot of action. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. And and did we we didn't show our good friend uh, Joe Natali's work from uh, yesterday, did we? I don't I don't, I don't think I don't we showed we this guy. I don't know where he get, comes up with this shit, but I don't know if we have it in the queue. But if we do, we can pull it up in a minute. But before we get to that, today's show also brought to you by Amp Human, uh, makers of PR lotion, right? So we all know that you're going up the Mur de Bretagne. You can go as fast as you want, as hard as you want. Eventually, you're going to slow down. But what slows you down? It's lactic acid. Um, the only thing clinically proven to buffer lactic acid is sodium bicarbonate. And uh, there, there's tons of ways to get this into your system well, it turns out Amp Human has come up with the most effective proven way to get bicarbonate into the muscles, and that's through the skin. So uh, PR lotion, uh, it, it, for me, it's been a total game changer. In fact, you should rub some of this on your arms next time you try to do pull-ups. <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking that. I might no, have I, I, it, it, And we should run our own, cl- uh, uh, you know, so the move should have a clinical study 
to and just call it sort of the George three clinical study. See if we can get him to three pull ups. You rub some of this PR lotion on your shoulders and your arms, maybe even your upper back. But my lats, yeah, I think that. Yeah, the lats. Yeah, maybe even your hands, because that's probably the problem. You can't hold on long enough. Um, PR lotion, it, it, it's a game changer being used uh, not just in this Peloton, but pro sports uh, all over the world. Absolutely works. Proven to work. Head on over to amphuman slash the move. Use the code TDF20. There's our flow code TDF20 for 20% off at checkout. Amphuman.com slash the move. Um, let's talk about the, uh, can we talk about the we do segment? Because we, we're getting some action there. And we, we did the preview show um, uh, a couple of days ago where George and I talked about our effort um, up the climb. But check this out. This, this is amazing. So we should, uh, if, if we have any brand new listeners checking in, we should give them the whole background. on. This well, segment. so the background is, is us at, at We Do and The Move here are putting on the, the richest bike race in America this year. We asked the people to vote for their favorite segment somehow some way there was this, a segment selected outside of brevard north carolina which is in the middle of nowhere absolutely gorgeous by the way um george and i went out and previewed the climb about a month ago um and we've we've challenged with dur during the what well, we've got you know the three weeks of the tour uh, anybody can go out all the rules and regulations are on the website we do dot team uh there we have there, there's a lot of stuff that people need to abide by primarily uh um, you know, this is not open to professionals, um, amateurs only, but, uh, for three weeks, anybody that goes out and, and sets the time gets, gets a prize, baby. And not just overall men and women, overall U23 men and women, but all age groups. And so lots on the line, 10 grand to win men and yeah. women. It'd overall. be fun. It'd be fun for all these people doing the segment to kind of shoot us some videos of how they're warming up. What Love it, you it. Know, the, the, obviously they have to do the selfies at the top, but we want to know how they're those strategizing. Are called, those are called Georgies. The, the Georgies at the top. <laughs> we want to know how you're strategizing, what your plan is. Uh, shoot us some videos. I think it'd be fun. Yeah. So, so we've got some action. Here's the women's leaderboard. Well, I mean, do you, Beata? Is that how we say that? Beata? Beata Rossa. Beata's got a big lead. She's got, uh, gosh, almost five minutes over Karen Willis. But the one I, I want to highlight is, is the, this kid who dropped a time yesterday. Um, this kid, Ben Wright. Okay, look. First of all, uh, look who's in fourth there. Pretty boy. Um, uh, the, the previous KOM on this segment was done in 2011. When we went and did it, the, the, it still existed. Then Tyler Horschel came along, set a good time. Then a 21-year-old kid, Ben Wright from Virginia, beats it by two seconds. And I don't know if we have a picture of this kid, but we he, do. he looks, I mean, aside from that peach fuzz on his face, he looks like he's eight years old. <laughs> this kid right here just uh, wow. beat the KOM by two seconds. Great job. What are we going to do if he wins both? He wins the overall and that we got We got some thinking to do. 21 years old, 21 going on get nine. On, get him on a team. Damn. Get this yep. boy signed. Yeah. Nice work, Ben. But anyways, we're starting to get it. This is cool. It's cool to see people. And I think Ben's from Virginia, so I don't know if he was just cruising through and accidentally rode up the climb. I doubt it. But this is what we wanted. People made the voyage. You and know? we're just getting started. And we're, yeah, we're just getting started. This is the, that was the second day of the, of the challenge. So, and that brought to you by Outside Plus, who's just doing uh, – they're, they're going to reimagine. They've already reimagined, but they, they are going to um, redefine – what it means to get content for folks like us, like in, in the outdoor space, not just cycling, but triathlons, running, climbing, yoga, uh, healthy living, all of these things. Robin and his whole team over at Outside, um, just crushing it, Outside Plus. And that, by the way, that leaderboard is brought to you by The Feed. Um, been partners of ours for a long time. Damn good idea. But uh, feed, the people at The Feed ought to send Ben maybe a package because he, he looks like he needs to eat a little bit. <laughs> Or maybe not. Should we talk about tomorrow? I, I am predicting some carnage. I do think the rain is going to come. And by the way, this isn't just rain. It's, it's, I think the high temp is like 60, so call it in the high 50s. Uh, what a nasty day for, for, for in, in terms of running. you got a downhill finish, and then you, they just start turning all over the place. It's still pretty lumpy. It's not a flat. You usually no. 
see the tour have some flat action for the sprinters, the, the pure sprinters. Brittany is never flat. That part of France is is very. It's like Austin, actually. I mean, it's, it just rolls. It's constantly rolling. Like they'll get out of this this region and it'll be flatter. But Brittany, Brittany's tough. It's uh, and then the pavements. A lot of times the pavements roll slow. It just they make for hard days. And then you throw in the nerves of a of a hectic finish, which you know hopefully I don't know if I'm hoping, but maybe our first sprint finish. I would I would think so. I think a lot of the teams going to go all in. Um, you know, some of the stronger climber sprinter guys like Cobrelli and Sagan are going to m- try to make it super hard on these lumpy climbs right before the finish line. Uh, I think it's going to be another jam packed action day. And when you look at the run in, I mean, the last three K, I don't even know what, what, <laughs> what was happening here. Like this is, that's, and you said downhill, correct? Well, it's downhill until about three k to go, and then it's and then they just start turning all through town. And does this uh, favor um, uh, MVP for the day with the sprinters teams taking well, control? I, mean, I think they're going to control the race. They may like you know, there's enough guys that are now. I mean, there's people now that are you know, twenty thirty minutes down, so they could. It's it's hard. It's always hard to like hand pick. Okay, you go on the break and you go because you somebody always sneaks in that's like three minutes down, and then they got to work. But if they could do it right and have a bunch of 30 minuters down, up the road, then they they protect the jersey. That's all they want to do. And then the sprinters teams have to work. Um, I mean, we've seen in these sprints, especially yesterday, we should have talked about this yesterday, Caleb Ewan, I don't know, man. I don't see anybody beating him. He looked good. Well, hang on a second. I, I'm, I'm really interested to see. Uh, you're going to start with this Cavendish stuff I'm going to go there. Oh, come on. But I'm also <laughs> interested to see, will they put guys on the front to control the race tomorrow? Yes. Will they? So they're yes. going to have the confidence in Cav. You saw today on the sprint, uh, the bonus sprint, they were going for like seventh place. And Cav looked easy. He looked like the old Cav. And of course, Caleb was coming up. I'm not sure he actually ended up getting it. Caleb but got it. He got it. Yeah. But Cav didn't go all in. I know Cav. He was probably a good 90% following the wheels, did a little effort, and was happy. You can see him laughing, at, laughing afterwards. He's He's got the mo back right now, so I'm 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 I'm, I'm rooting for him. I mean, tomorrow. I look, I I I I don't think it's going to happen. I think it'd be an amazing story. How old is Cavendish now? Forty two, thirty four. I think. No, I don't know. <laughs> but it, it would it would be uh, it'd be incredible. I, I but but I don't think so. Which, by the way, with these climbs at the end, you could see MVP going again, making it hard. I mean, these there's it, we're not going to count him out, but I'm trying to get away and get more time and. Making another big show. I mean, the guy is on fire right now. What he did today was, you know, uh, just incredibly impressive. So we can't count him on tomorrow. But my pick for tomorrow is Cavendish. And I'm, mm. are I'm you kidding me right now? I'm interested to see. You have got to stop if his the team man will go crush. to the front and uh, you know work for him. No, they they no they will not. I thought you were talking about Lotto. You said they would. No, I thought you were asking me if if, if well Lotto for sure will. Okay. No yeah. quick step. No, absolutely not. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> this is you you have these man crushes and, hey, they, and they take over your life they're on a roll the ambiance on the team right now is is good that's I mean, what that's other, a, that brings other, energy uh, you, Van Avermont's you, you, you his other man GVA crush, yeah. I mean the fucking poster up in your bathroom and <laughs> and, and, and it, come on with this hey I've been fortunate enough to have uh, you know good teammates in my career you being one of them so uh, you know that's not some, oh. I'm something I'm proud of <laughs> Cavendish is 36 now by the way 36 yeah, I, I mean, listen, it, it would be an incredible story. I'm with you, Joy. He looked good today. We we need to see that emotion. I mean, somebody like MVP today, when he started crying at the end of the interview, he couldn't hold back his tears. That's what this sport is all about, you know, the emotion. And he's doing it for not only for the win, but for his, his grandfather's legacy. Just so much on the line. Cav, you know, he's been on top of the game for for forever. I was teammates with him. It shows and we, you how long and it was. Note, it shows we, you how old he is. We saw him get very emotional when he thought it was over. Yeah. yeah, when his career was ending, yeah, this, very emotional. To see him back, even the fact that we're talking about him with a chance to win the stage, to me, is already a victory, and I'm just I'm hoping we to all, see we, it tomorrow. We actually <laughs> always talk about him because <laughs> you have these obsessions, and so we have to. I mean, you always bring because Grumpy guys up. over here is always, you know, you, you you don't you don't like the emotion, you don't yeah. like well, you don't like the happy ending. We, we were, need to see a happy ending tomorrow. Excuse me, <laughs> which is why did you, you just probably, say that out loud? <laughs> if you don't like the this emotion, is a, this is a G-rated show. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, if you don't like the emotional riders, that would – and Roglic is your guy. He's yeah. He's stone-faced. Yeah, I mean, Ivan Drago. He's a, well, he's, he did a little bit of a – I think he posted something or something posted – Some somebody posted something of him saying 
you know, this crash was luck. Getting a nice crash in the first day, it's over. I'm not crashing anymore. I mean, you know, he's he's. he's so the other, it. it was cute because I was watching the. We have, you know, we always have people with us when we watch in the mornings, um, guests that are here in Aspen for for the summer, or whatever. But my I, both my sons are uh, today and. Uh, Vanderpool crossed the line, you know, he falls, he, he often falls off his bike after the, I mean, that shows you how, I think that means he's gone very hard, but he's uh, on the ground and uh, getting emotional. And my little guy who's 12 said, dad, is this, and he didn't see me race back in in the day. He says, is this what you used to do? <laughs> and I said, no, I, you know, in fact, I never did that. <laughs> and then next thing you know, Philippe shows the class move in the yellow jersey, comes over and congratulates him and rides off. And I said, you know what, as a matter of fact, I never did that either. <laughs> As did Pogachar. Yeah. He's got some friends in the bunch. No. The, 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 the bunch is friendlier now. I was pretty friendly. Um, well, you were me. friendly because you were, you know, <laughs> you're trying to win the popularity contest. And you did. Yep. And you're still winning the popularity contest, even though you cannot do pull ups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to work on that in the next three weeks. Yeah. Got any? Uh, what, 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 so what let's go. I, I said Cav. Who you got? No, I, Caleb he Ewan's going to win with one leg. You're going Caleb Ewan. Absolutely. He hasn't been climbing that well so far. Maybe he's holding back, but he's got to make it over those bumps right before the finish line. All right. Email here. This is great. Uh, it says, uh, Phil writes, isn't it a little odd that Lance didn't pick Pogacar because he lost the Slovenian National Championship, but instead picked Roglic. Who also lost it. <laughs> who didn't even show up at that race. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and then here's a good part of this email, too. It says, anyways, I won the Ventum last year. Right on. Uh, I was just a Peloton rider before that, but felt like I was going nowhere. Well, because well, you were not. <laughs> you know, In fact, you weren't going anywhere. You were in standing still. Uh, it, was a, it was a lot like handing a 16-year-old the keys to a Ferrari. Wow. I absolutely love it. I had just moved to San Francisco Bay Area, and now I've seen much more of it than I ever would have. Thanks. Love the show from yeah. Phil. Cool. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I'm still. I'm glad I I, I switched my pick. I, I think Roglic um, is looking good. But. Well, right now, there's no doubt these guys are. They're the ones. Sure, guys like Carapaz, they're finishing now in the first group, but these guys are up there going with the attacks, doing the sprints at the end. It's a big difference of finishing in a group of 20 guys and actually sprinting. You know, for the seconds and third places. Uh, th right now, these guys have the upper edge on. Carapats and uh, they're definitely uh, the the favorites. And 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 all the while, I mean, we, we are two days into this. Like, it, <laughs> and let's not forget. I mean, anything can happen. Primos hasn't raced since Liège Best Only Edge. Think about all these turns they have to sprint around. This some of this stuff is impossible to mimic in training. And he's right there. He's yeah, got he's got a good team. He's gotten he's, top three in the first two stages and hasn't raced since Liège. It's just incredible. And we got an early time trial, which I, then we'll start to see. I mean, this issue around Pogachar not winning his national championships. We'll we'll see if he was uh, just training through it or what. I mean, that's. Yep. It, I love the fact we get an early TT. <clears throat> yes, and Joe Natale has reappeared. <laughs> I mean, I pretty much piss excellence. Shake and bake, baby. Shake and bake, right? He threw Anna in, too. I like that. Yeah, Anna. She was very, very happy that she made Natalie's um, <laughs> lineup. And look at you, JB. This is like 20 years ago. <laughs> know, it doesn't right? even look like you anymore. <laughs> but isn't this something? You know, you say when I first watched this movie, you know, uh, he has that scene where uh, he says, you know, uh, you know, bring it on, trying to bring me down. <laughs> I used to always say that. And sure enough, look what the fuck happened. Gosh. I shouldn't have said it so much. <laughs> Here's another. It quick, happened. Another quick email. Hey guys, uh, Julian Alaphilippe became a father less than two weeks ago. Seeing his win yesterday, I was wondering how how does having a child affect motivation? How was it for you, Lance and George? Thanks from Yannick. What, what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, he did do the. You see, yeah, I think that the, was the sort of the binky thing uh, at the yeah, end. I, you know, yeah, shout yeah, out yeah. to the baby. I I didn't. I mean, look, I love. Nobody loves being a father more than me, but I. I never thought about that. <laughs> See what I mean? The man has no emotion. The man has no emotion. No, I mean, emotion. and my kids are here. I but mean, for wait, normal no, people. That's not. I, for normal people. Do, do not put words or thoughts in my head. I'm not no. trying to minimize the significance of having children, but um, you're, you should, you know what? I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. I, 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 I'll I have answer your it. back here. I definitely I, felt like it gave me a higher sense of purpose that I wasn't just 
racing my bike for myself. I had other people that I was racing for. And yeah, it was definitely very motivating for me personally. I think if anything, for me, it was just uh, the day as we've seen in this game, right? That the risks and the dangers, not just in racing, but in training, that starts to come into your head. Like, okay, you know, guys get seriously hurt. I mean, people have lost, you, you start to realize just how potentially dangerous the sport is. And, and as, a, as a parent, like to me, that's what I think about. Like I, I need to be able to pick my kids up and, and you know, drive them to school, all the shit that parents do. It's not like, oh, like now I'm especially motivated because I have a kid. Man, you're supposed to be motivated anyways. <laughs> right. The guy, the guy <laughs> slinging burgers at McDonald's as, who just had a new baby isn't like, Wow, I'm gonna make a great burger. Today. Hell of a today, burger. This is. I'm, you know what? I'm kid. gonna put two two slices of cheese on here for this person because <laughs> I had to get. That's ex essentially what you're saying. Hey, it, it worked for me. It, it gave, gave me a little extra boost. Speaking of kid uh, kids, and we have updates. We, we the show had to start a little late today because mm -hmm. George was prioritizing family over work. <laughs> we were watching Facetime. Enzo got yeah. He, he podiumed. He got fifth in the time trial, fourth in the road race, and third today in the criteria. You know what? They should have two more stages. I know. He's like, working let's make his way some up. shit up. Tomorrow he gets second, <laughs> and then in two days he would win. That's amazing. So his first national championship podium. Yep. Sick. Well, now you know the na the national championship podiums are top five actually. So he was on the podium the whole time. <laughs> oh, I did. I did <laughs> I know I, you know, in fact, like I, did, I did not know that. No. I, yeah. Let's. <laughs> he worked I, his way up the podium. Everybody gets a medal. How long has he been racing? Um, this is his first real year. He's done a lot of mountain bike stuff for, for NICA, which is a great program across the country. And, uh, so I, I, I guess a couple, couple years, but this is the first national championships. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. George has him out there. George probably, you probably don't let him eat. No, no. I mean, I've he, seen, I, I've seen the kid, uh, uh I, progress. I, I try to force I, feed it, him. It's unbelievable. I mean, not a, George probably makes him do it. Everybody thinks he's nice. <laughs> he's forcing his child to do intervals. <laughs> kid kid comes down he's like he's measured out his cereal that's you know, the beauty only... of this is like uh, there's no forcing going on he's, in fact he's pushing me to do more stuff than i'd like to do he, on the bike he, he well, motor yeah, paces yeah. motor paces him to school yeah. <laughs> yeah i bet he can do more pull-ups than you too this is i mean i'll never get over this this was i thought you were faking i thought for sure he's faking this i was i actually was faking it <laughs> well, we can walk right back over there right now give me a couple weeks or give me like 10 days jeez any more letters or are we, we, we out of here? I got to go. You know, I'm George is getting ahead of me again today because he, you're going to go ride now? Yep. I yeah, I got to go. The, our local sheriff, Joe DeSalvo, his big charity golf tournament is today. Uh, it's going to be cool. Uh, uh, PGA player Billy Horschel's playing. I got a stacked team. I suspect we'll still get our ass kicked since we're playing against one of the best in the world. But I'm not going to be able to ride. Mm. You not know? good. So I might do some pull-ups, though, on my way out. <laughs> but... Um, yeah. Stay tuned for tomorrow. It's going to be an awesome, another awesome day. Not, not a short stage. Very technical, like you said, up there in that, that region. Lots of corners, could lots of bumps. Rain. Could be Could real. be raining. First potential. We real should stop sprint. saying it may be raining because then, it then it's sunny. Yeah. We should say it could be sunny and then it'd be raining. So but, it's going to be a good and day. And if anybody, we've got an APB out on that idiot who was standing in the road saying hi to grandma and grandpa. <laughs> we've got to find this person. Like, what are they going to do? Apparently, the Tour de France wants to sue them. So sue them. We'll okay. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, oh, you know what? I did want to bring up a point. I'm sorry. This is the last thing, and then I'll let y'all go. But, and I asked you this, George, and maybe Johan knows the answer, so you can ask him on y'all's show. Okay. But why isn't there? So what happens is the tour rolls. So you've got the publicity caravan that goes through an hour before, which throws out all kinds of free swag, and all the sponsors have a – it's like a parade. They have floats in the thing, and – and then, you know, then there's about an hour that goes by and then you probably start to see some gendarmes come by and then you see some race cars and then you see Christian Prudhomme in the lead car and then you see the field. Why wouldn't there be a, 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 just another vehicle with speakers everywhere that just has like an automated repeat, like just warn it. Like, I just think cueing people like basically get the fuck out of the road. The riders are coming. Like, why wouldn't I think we need something. Well, they mentioned that there's about. I think a thousand police on the course every day in front and behind the Peloton. And I think these people need to hear it. And, yeah. and, and, and if you think even as big as this story was, all these people that are standing on the side of there, there's a lot of people that never even saw that. They're like, what? I didn't know that happened. Like, I think they just need to be reminded literally minutes before the Peloton mm. gets there. I get like, out of the road. I like that idea. Yeah, because we talk about it every year. Oh, awareness, awareness, awareness. Guys, 
Yeah. It, something's not, some, uh, awareness isn't working. Mm-hmm. Like, it, I think they need to be reminded real time. Yeah, it's not just spectators in the road. It's intoxicated spectators in the road quite mm. often. They're not going to listen wow. to it. That's loudspeaker. Yeah, by the time the Peloton passes by, they've been pre-gaming for several hours. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, sometimes that gets out of hand. Well, that's the thing. We sit here and eat breakfast and watch the tour. You know, that's eight hours ahead of us, so they're, they're, they're having uh, – Anyways, I, I, I think this is a good idea. I, I, and a lot of my good ideas get adopted. I don't ever get credit for them, but I have a feeling we will start to see this. <laughs> will you ask Johan about it? I will. Okay. I will. All right. He's livid about it. So, yeah. Uh, he, he, you know, he gets fired up. I mean, he really gets emotional about stuff. But anyways, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning when we talk about stage three. See if MVP can MVP as MVP.